Good morning, Soul Embodiment Tribe. Bridget Patton here with Soul Massages. And I just wanted to hop in here as I'm drinking my coffee and running my Healy program. I was getting a whole bunch of messages about the restructuring of the hierarchy, and I haven't really gotten to dive into the synarchy in a way that uh, I think is digestible. And if you're not studying the gene keys and you're not uh, reading up on what's happening as we're restructuring uh, humanity and moving into some of these other uh, key codes for uh, our wisdom, really. It's how we're using our energy more efficiently. And this is why the hierarchy structure is crumbling and why we're being asked to build things in a different way. So we talked about how those grassroots movements would be the pillars, the foundations for our future synarchies. And when I'm talking about that, I'm really talking about entrepreneurs and small businesses and uh, more one-on-one -on -one connection with our physical uh, human beings. So right now, we're really going virtual. There's a lot of people working from home. There's a lot of uh, programs and whatnot that are going virtual. This isn't something new. This has been going on for a while. However, it's really taking off for people that maybe didn't even think it was possible. People are thinking outside the box and they're doing things in this way because this is how we're being compelled and sometimes forced. So right now we're sort of being forced into new mindsets. And if we're not striving to break apart those belief systems uh, every day on purpose and intentionally and really paying attention to our emotional intelligence, then it's going to feel shocking. It's going to feel like a surprise, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. But for those of us and for those of humanity who are really paying attention and who are evolving their consciousness and learning what this data and information means that's coming in through, you know, the ethers and through our bodies and through the interpretation of uh, what our organs are even picking up on, because everything happens energetically before it happens physically. There are no surprises. <laughs> I mean, yes, we get delighted and we get to be in awe of the way things play out. However, there isn't any like shift or major shift that's happening uh, collectively that isn't a big surprise. So that brings me to a lot of uh, the work that we do and we talk about collectively is light work. We talk about light work, but there's also a lot of talk about shadow work. And so I want to talk about that because there's a necessity for both. There's a necessity for the breakdown and the destruction of things. And there's a necessity for the creating and building up of things. And then, of course, there's the homeostasis that we return to um, in between utilizing our energy this way or that way. And based off of our capacity and what we're able to, I guess, transmute or process at any given time is what's going to allow us to take in more threads of light or more threads of uh, shadow. And the shadow energy really is a gift just as the light is. The shadow energy is showing us what isn't working anymore. And when we aren't fighting against it and we're not trying to defend against it, we can understand it from a different perspective. And so I always invite everyone to imagine how they handle a small child or even an animal. You know, like if you're feeling defensive or resistant to any um, terminology or any, any suggestions that I'm giving, just shift to what works for you because I'm just doing what works for me and what has worked in my life and what I've recognized and suggested to other clients and whatnot. So if it doesn't work, then find something that applies. Listen to the frequency, feel the energy that I am transmitting and see what works for you in your reality. So as I'm looking at an animal or a child, it's like, how would I handle this situation if it was my child or if I was working with animals. And the reason I'm saying that is because some of our programming and a lot of people are still in a primal, archaic survival, fight or flight mentality. 
And that's because we've gone through a lot of trauma, but we've also gained a lot of wisdom throughout our lifetimes. And so right now we're being asked to come together in communities so that we can really anchor this stuff in. And the reason I say we're coming together in communities is because <laughs> one of the primary wounds is what we've done to each other, right? Humans, humans against humans. And so without these communities that are authentic and that are doing the work in both areas and also looking at how to build things out that are regenerative and that are um, inclusive of differences of opinions and differences of approaches and collaboration, how necessary the collaborative effort is right now. And the message I got last year was, I'm not going to get any more messages until I'm connected to a community. So a lot of the messages that I channel in here, they don't come in until I hit to go live and then they come in and I can feel in my body when it's time for a message, whether I'm drinking my coffee or it's later at night, I'm committing to get in here and just kind of share and translate some of the energy that's coming in live so that you guys can keep up with what's happening. So you can really tap into those inner prompts and know where you're being asked to move right now and which belief systems you're being asked to upgrade. So we're really uh, blessed and um, it's really amazing that as humans, we're able to take our programming and upgrade it. So we can take any one of our belief systems at any time and look at it and say, how is this serving me? You know, is this really benefiting me in my life? Is this my highest potential? Look at your belief systems and decide how this is allowing you to spend your energy in the most efficient way. And once you look at it from that perspective, you're going to be able to shift your belief system in a direction that allows the energy to keep moving. And it allows the energy to move into something that you may end up creating. Maybe you create a new belief system. Maybe you create, you know, a new habit or something that allows for that energy to flow in you and through you into something else. Um, so anyway, this is the way that the hierarchy is shifting into a community mindset where we're all um, involved in what I'm calling and what I've picked up on from Richard Rudd and the Gene Keys, the synarchy. And the reason I really appreciate his language, I've read through a lot of his material. It's really the highest frequency translated um, and that's digestible that I've witnessed myself yet. I will pop a um, link in the comments if you're interested in looking into any of the Gene Key material. Uh, the nonprofit sanctuary does get a percentage of any purchases that you guys make to fund what we're doing, what we're creating, what we're building. And so everything that we're doing right now, everyone's just putting in and just really it's a big, huge Petri dish. <laughs> we're all scientists and we're all experimenting with our emotions and seeing how we can create places for our creativity to go. Because the information that's coming in right now needs um, a container so that the people that are getting these messages are able to create without worrying about their well-being and without worrying about how they're going to take care of themselves tomorrow. Like there's people that are getting messages and they're very brilliant minded and they need some of us that have other capacities to step in and take care of these other areas so that they can create, so they can do what they need to do. And we're all kind of taking care of each other in this way. And in a community setting, that's natural you are in balance. So it's natural for you to want to step in and see where the community needs your gifts and your skill set. That is an innate ingrained part of us. And if we're not able to do that because we're so busy with our work schedule and our lives and so on and so forth, a part of us is dying. A part of our soul is being shut down and we're not able to really fully express ourselves as the divine beings that we are. So Moving into a synarchy is going to be more regenerative. It's going to be sustainable. It's going to be supportive of each individual. And I really invite each and every one of you guys to 
explore in whatever direction to find whatever community, even if, it, if you're here getting your messages here, but then you go find a community elsewhere that's doing it and that's getting really involved with making these shifts on purpose and intentionally, um, at least you're doing something. At least you're getting involved with people on purpose and you're developing your emotional intelligence and you're exploring your gift and you're doing what it is that you came here to do, not what you were told to do when you got here by people who weren't doing it. <laughs> so think back to when you were a kid and the dreams that you had and the way that you played. What were you doing when you were playing? I was a teacher. I was a mother. I was always the mother of the family and I was always telling everybody what to do. But I was also a mediator. I was mediating in every role I look at all throughout my life. I was like a middleman. I was between the upper management and whoever else was doing this. So now I'm seeing the upper management being those light workers and those people who are translating this light energy to bring this new technology and these higher human abilities forth and reaching here into the business realm and connecting with people on a very realistic perspective, like building your business out. And, you know, what does it look like as we're going through this transition from a hierarchy to a synergy? Things have to break down. But whenever something breaks down, there's already something being created. So we don't have to go into this being fearful. We can be afraid, but we can do it in a courageous way. You know, it's that whole polarity, the balance of the polarity. Yes, I'm feeling fear, but yes, I'm moving forward with courage. So um, thank you everyone for listening. I hope this really helps you guys kind of digest the direction we're going in. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I look forward to working with all of you guys as we move forward through this shift and mwah, have a great day. I'll see you in the next.